Today, let's talk about the basic welding techniques in chemical equipment maintenance and fabrication. Welding is a process that joins two or more metal surfaces by heating, pressing, or both to form a single entity. There are many types of welding techniques, such as manual arc welding, submerged arc welding, gas welding, and CO2 shielded welding. Occasionally, you'll see slag welding, submerged arc welding, and plasma arc welding used in thin and precision equipment. These are all high-temperature fusion welding. Other types like pressure welding and lead welding are not commonly used in chemical engineering, so we won't cover them here. Let's start with manual arc welding, the SAO. Welding process uses flux to provide low voltage and high current energy, connecting the welding rod, base metal, and electrode holder through welding cables. The welding rod on the electrode holder and the base metal contact the flux electrodes, causing a discharge ionization effect that generates an arc. The welding rod and base metal melt and mix under the high temperature of the arc, forming a metal weld pool that fills the weld seam. Once the weld pool cools, the welding is complete. During the fusion welding process, if the atmosphere directly contacts the high temperature weld pool, oxygen in the air will oxidize the metal and nitrogen and water vapor will enter the weld pool, forming defects like pores, slag inclusions and cracks. Therefore, shielding gas is needed to isolate the air. In manual arc welding, the coating on the welding rod decomposes to produce shielding gas and slag, isolating the atmosphere. Depending on the coating composition, rods can be acidic or basic. Acidic rods are versatile, with good arc stability and easy operation, but slightly weaker mechanical properties and toughness. Basic rods have high crack resistance and toughness but are sensitive to impurities, with slightly less stable arc characteristics. They're generally used for load-bearing and pressure-bearing structures. The arc is the most crucial part of arc welding, and it's essential to ensure the arc's stability. It's a gas discharge phenomenon that effectively converts electrical energy into thermal energy. Welding involves low voltage, high current, high temperature, and strong luminosity. Manual arc welding equipment is simple and flexible, enabling welding in various positions and on irregular structures. The welding quality heavily depends on the welder's skill. For long welds, the production rate is relatively low, suitable for routine repairs and small batch equipment fabrication. Some special metals and thin plates cannot be welded. The second type is pressure arc welding, which has melting and non-melting types. Non-melting arc welding typically uses high melting point tungsten alloy electrodes, also known as tungsten inert gas, TIG welding. In this process, the tungsten electrode and arc generate an arc, but the tungsten itself doesn't melt requiring additional filler wire to be fed into the weld pool. Inert gas, usually argon, is used as a shielding gas to isolate the air. Argon doesn't chemically react with the metal weld pool, and the arc burns very stably in argon, even at low currents. It can burn steadily, making the metal weld pool easy to control. The filler wire itself doesn't carry current, resulting in a smooth welding process with minimal spatter. It also forms well on thin plates, TIG welding offers excellent weld quality, with aesthetically pleasing welds and no slag, making it visible and easy to operate. It's widely applicable, capable of welding almost all metal materials. However, TIG-E welding has a relatively small current, so the welding speed is slower and argon is expensive, leading to higher costs. Melting arc welding differs from TIG welding in that it directly uses the welding wire as the electrode, continuously melting and filling the weld pool. The welding wire is fed through a four-wheel feeder, creating an arc between the base metal and the wire, melting both and using argon to shield the arc and metal weld pool. Melting arc welding is generally semi-automatic or fully automatic, with shielding gas evolving from pure argon to mixed gases. Compared to TIG-E welding, it has a larger current, deeper weld pool, faster welding speed, and higher efficiency. However, its arc light is intense and the fumes are significant, posing greater harm to welders so protection must be enhanced. The third type is CO2 shielded welding, which is very similar in structure to melting arc welding, except that argon is replaced with CO2 as the shielding gas. Under the high temperature of the arc, CO2 gas decomposes and absorbs heat, causing the arc column to contract, concentrating the arc's heat. The welding wire melts quickly with deep penetration, fast welding speed, and high efficiency. Due to the strong penetration of the CO2 arc, it can reduce the need for grinding and beveling, significantly increasing production efficiency compared to manual arc welding. The shielding gas is cheap, lowering costs. 
The arc's heat is focused on a small area, and the CO2 gas flow cools the base metal, minimizing burn-through and deformation in thin welds. It lowers hydrogen in the weld, preventing cold cracks, ideal for large welding tasks. If voltage, current, and wire feed speed are mismatched, the weld seam may bend, become uneven and poorly formed. During welding, the arc light is intense, fumes are significant, and metal spatter is abundant and difficult to clean, affecting the weld's appearance. The fourth type is gas welding, generally used in situations without a power source. It uses acetylene and oxygen mixed in a specific ratio through welding tools as a heat source to melt the base metal and filler metal, forming a weld pool until the metal weld pool cools and forms a weld seam. The welding tool is small and flexible. Due to the slow heating of the gas welding heat source, production efficiency is low, the heat affected zone is large, and the weldment has significant deformation. The joint quality is not high. During gas welding, the heated metal easily combines with oxygen in the atmosphere to form oxides causing defects like pores and slag inclusions in the weld. To prevent oxide formation, gas welding flux is needed when welding non-ferrous metals, cast iron, and stainless steel. Gas welding flux can be directly added to the weld pool or applied to the welding wire, interacting with metal oxides or non-metallic inclusions to form slag that floats on the weld pool surface, isolating the metal weld pool from the atmosphere, and improving weld performance. Finally, let's briefly introduce two welding techniques you might encounter. Electroslag welding uses the resistance heat generated by current passing through slag as a heat source. The slag pool has high resistance, and when current passes through, it generates significant resistance heat, melting the filler metal and base metal, which solidifies after cooling to form a connection. Initially, the welding wire is used to ignite the arc, and solid flux is added to melt and form a liquid slag pool. Once the slag pool reaches a certain depth, the welding wire is fed into the slag pool, and the resistance heat generated by the slag melts the wire transitioning to the electroslag welding process. Electroslag welding is efficient, welding thick sections in one pass without grinding or beveling, offering high production efficiency at low cost. However, the joint remains at high temperatures for a long time, resulting in a columnar structure with low impact toughness, generally requiring heat treatment to restore toughness. Plasma welding evolved from TIG welding. In TIG welding, the arc is not constrained, and as the current increases, the arc column diameter also increases. The plasma arc uses an externally constrained water-cooled nozzle to prevent the arc column from freely expanding, forming a plasma arc with very high energy and temperature. It's similar to TIG welding, like a water pipe with a high-pressure nozzle, while the other doesn't. Plasma arc welding has strong penetration, capable of welding 10 mm thick stainless steel plates in one pass, with uniform weld seam shape and good quality, suitable for welding precision parts. However, it requires more control parameters and higher skill levels from welders. Below are some common weld defects to avoid, especially in load-bearing and pressure-bearing structures, as they directly affect product performance and production. Safety. Modern welding is no longer just a processing technology. Today's welding techniques have developed into a multidisciplinary engineering process, science, forming the foundation of modern industry. Advanced welding technology is like a work of art in industrial production. That's all for today's video. The work experience is for reference only. See you next time. Bye-bye.